So you went to your doctor and they prescribed you a standard lipids test with total cholesterol, HDL, LDL, and triglycerides. And now in your report, your LDL came out higher than the normal range and you're likely freaking out. Now, what you need to know is that just your standard LDL test, which is called LDL-C, C for cholesterol concentration, is not enough to know your risk of heart disease and whether to start medication or not. Instead, you should ask your doctor to prescribe the following tests. Number one, advanced lipids test. Now, the advanced lipids test measures what's called small dense LDL. Now, before we go any further there, let me explain to you what LDL really is. LDL stands for low density lipoprotein. LDL is not cholesterol. It's a protein particle that consists of a core and a surface. The core contains cholesterol esters and triglycerides, which are fats, and the surface contains phospholipids and ApoB protein. Now, it's important to note that cholesterol itself doesn't float in the blood. Cholesterol is a type of fat and doesn't mix with blood, which is the reason that it's carried in particles known as lipoproteins or lipoproteins. Another way to think about this is that lipoprotein is a truck and cholesterol is one of its cargo. Now the truck is transporting the cargo to your construction site, that is your cells, using roads, which are your blood vessels. Now, LDL are of two types. Large buoyant LDL, which is like a beach ball and simply floats along the blood vessel wall. Whereas small dels LDL, also called as SD LDL, are smaller and able to penetrate the endothelium, which is the innermost layer of our blood vessels. There, it gets oxidized and is eaten up by white blood cells and forms arterial plaque. This process is a lot more complicated and a topic for another video. Now, the key point is that you need to know how many small dense LDL particles you have or their percentage relative to the total number of HDL LDL particles. An advanced lipids test will give you the number of large and small particles and their reference ranges. Some labs call it NMR, some call it LIPO profile. But you'll probably have to pay for this test and insurance may not cover it, unfortunately. And if it's too expensive, there is a good replacement measurement, which is your ratio of your triglycerides to HDL, which is present in your standard report. Now in this research study, triglycerides divided by HDL is a better predictor of LDL size. The higher the ratio, the more small dense LDL particles are produced by the liver. I'll post the link to the study in the description below so you can, you can look at the research yourself. Now, as the ratio climbs towards two, the small dense LDL particles are more common. And as we discussed earlier, the small dense particles are more likely to enter the walls of your arteries, get oxidized to form arterial plaque. So you wanna ensure that your triglycerides to HDL ratio stays below two. Number two, another test you should get done is the HSCRP. Now, HSCRP stands for high sensitivity C-reactive protein. Now, C-reactive protein is a marker of inflammation in the body. C-reactive protein is released by our liver and it rises when you have inflammation in your body. Now, remember, I talked previously about endothelium, which is your innermost artery layer. Now, if your endothelium is damaged, it causes inflammation in the body as the body starts fighting the damage, sending white blood cells to the inflamed area. Now, inflammation increases, increases oxidative stress, which leads to oxidation of the small dense LDL particles after they penetrate the uh, endothelium. Now, for example, if you expose a sliced apple, it turns brown, why? What's happening is that the oxygen in the air is reacting with its enzymes creating a brown pigment and the apple starts going bad. But if you add lemon juice, it will slow down this browning because it's, it contains vitamin C, which is a powerful antioxidant and it'll prevent the browning process. Um, now, the same process is happening to your LDLs in the presence of oxidative stress. As we already discussed in this video, 
when LDL particles gets oxidized, it converts into arterial plaque. Now, in this study, high CRP concentrations in the blood have been associated with a higher risk of coronary artery disease or coronary heart disease. I'll drop the link of the study below in the description for you to take a look. Number three, lipoprotein A. Now, lipoprotein A, also known as LP little a, is produced in the liver and it's an independent risk factor for heart disease. Studies have shown that it's genetic in nature. So if you have family history of heart disease, especially premature heart disease or death from premature heart disease, you should definitely get this test done. Now, LP little a has a similar property like LDL of being deposited in the arterial walls. In fact, LP little a has been shown to be more prone to oxidation. Hence, it is more likely to cause arterial plaque. Levels over 25 to 30 milligrams per deciliter should lead to a more strict control of the other factors for heart disease. So far, there's no specific therapy to decrease LP little a levels, but there are a few trials underway to assess how levels can be reduced significantly and whether that would result in decrease in incidences of heart disease related deaths with high levels of LP little a. Number four, insulin and insulin resistance. Why should you measure insulin? Isn't it related to diabetes? Now, high levels of insulin and the resulting insulin resistance is one of the main factors raising your risk of heart disease. You want to ask your doctor for a two hour insulin glucose challenge test. Now this test measures not only your glucose, but also your insulin levels, yet doctors rarely prescribe it. This should be done when fasting, with the blood sugar and insulin levels checked at fasting, then again at one or and two hour intervals. Your blood sugar levels should be less than 80 milligrams per deciliter fasting and would never rise above 110 or 120 milligrams per deciliter after one and two hour checks. Your insulin should be less than five international units per ml fasting and should never rise above 30 international units per ml after one and two hour checks. Once you know your insulin numbers, you can use the HOMA IR model to know if you're insulin resistant or not. I'll drop the link in the description below. If your insulin levels are high or if you have insulin resistance, you need to change your lifestyle. So the next video you're gonna want to watch is to understand what insulin resistance really is, how it increases your risk of heart disease, and how to reverse it.